So friends, many of you watched the first half of this story about Hungerford Furniture. And in that uh, story, I mentioned that Elvis had never endorsed another product. So let's talk about that for a moment. There's a lot of people that have come out and said that he endorsed Sutter Made Donuts when he was in Shreveport, Louisiana on the uh, Louisiana Hayride. So let's dig into that for just a moment. So Southern Made Donuts uh, did have a franchise or a place that made donuts in Shreveport, and I believe that Elvis did frequent there. If he did a commercial, it was live, but that is not endorsing a product. That's him on the Louisiana Hayride just saying it. If there was a commercial out there, friends, I can get a piece of Elvis's hair. You see this? There's a lock of Elvis's hair. If there was a commercial that Elvis did specifically for Southern May Donuts, and he was indeed getting paid to endorse them, then we would hear it. It would be out there somewhere. And Southern May even claims that that's the only commercial that he ever did for anybody. So they claim that, that they are the only people that he ever endorsed. So until we come up with that, I don't believe it's true. Sorry. I believe that Hungerford is indeed what we said, the only one. But now we've got another little issue with Hungerford. My friend Bob, who wrote the EPE catalog, a comprehensive A to Z guide of vintage EPE memorabilia, he wanted to interject a little bit of information that he had found. So this is what we found. So you know I'm trying to be as accurate as possible in everything that I say. And he reached out to me and said, you know, in the Elvis World book that you showed in the first video about this, in uh, other places, many books, it does say that the Elvis furniture campaign was never released. This guy's an expert. He spent four years from Holland creating this book and dug into it. And he found that indeed they did use this commercial a couple of times up until May of 1957, sometime in May. And I'll show you a commercial that was put or an ad that was put out in a newspaper in May right here. And they call this the Elvis Presley Young Modern Bedroom Grouping. And it's saying that they have up to 50 correlated pieces where they put all that stuff together. And it's just interesting, the, uh, the actual newspaper article earlier says that he himself actually um, chose the pieces to the furniture meaning he chose the um, the pulls, the colors, all that kind of stuff. If you go down to the third paragraph, it says that Elvis himself picked out the furniture finish, the drawer pulls, construction details, according to designer Samuel Kirkinski. The rock and roll singer chose a mellow amber walnut finish and brass hardware for the straight line, uncluttered modern furniture. When he okayed flared legs and easy moving metal drawer slides, however, Elvis wisecracked, at least they can't accuse me of too much movement in this. The furniture can't wiggle like me. He actually picked out an extremely discreet furniture design to carry his name. The flare legs on the case goods resemble Elvis's favorite guitar slapping stance, but otherwise furniture is simple, modern, no uh, curly cues or wavy lines. And if you're wondering how much this stuff costs, some people ask me about that. It says table start at 39. Three-piece bedroom suit will sell for about 300 and a dining room set, including table, buffet, and six chairs will be approximately $340. That was a lot of money, but that's probably similar to what you would spend for something now. It would be like a, the 340 would be something like five times that. It would be about $2,000 somewhere in that neighborhood. So this says that the Hungerford Company of Memphis uh, and Elvis don't seem to have too much in common, but they jumped on the successful bandwagon of Elvis uh, with a photo shoot and being endorsed by him. And they actually put out uh, a line you can see here says they, it, they introduced it at the uh, home furnishings market in Chicago, January 1957. And they're saying again that Elvis picked out all the stuff. And it says that he did do a simple photo shoot on December the 12th, 56. I showed you where that happened at by posing in front of some of these uh, in an awkward way, which I agree, those photographs didn't look the best, in my opinion. It was a little, he looked like he was uncomfortable about the whole thing. And what makes this especially interesting is that it dates from May 1957. And what we're talking about is that uh, particular ad that you saw in the newspaper. So it means it did come out. 
And Bob said that somebody reached out to him that actually had a piece of this furniture with Elvis Presley name on the furniture, but they would not allow him to take pictures of it. If they did, I would have shown you right here. Unfortunately, they wouldn't let us see them, but it happened, friends. So friends, this furniture was indeed created. The pictures were taken, the marketing plan was put in place, and this furniture was indeed released. Not very collectible because I've never ever seen any of it. And my friend, while he was searching and researching for four years, he was able to run across some of it. So it is out there, but you just never know. So we set the record straight. It did indeed get released and it was out there. So now let's finish our story and our interview with the son of the man who took these pictures. And a special thanks and shout out to Bob for bringing that information to the table so we all know. Oh, this is a really big room. Big green screen. That's old school right there. <laughs> yes, it is. It's Frankenstein <laughs> version. So this is a 4,000 square foot soundstage. So Hustle and Flow was filmed in That's here. That's right. And the, set, the set was built in here with the music room and the, and the living room was attached to it. And, um, See that thing? Oh, Louisiana Hayride backdrop. Yep. Is that original or recreation? It was from the 86 uh, series, uh, Elvis. Oh, okay. And you filmed that? Uh, no. You just acquired it from the series? I acquired it, yes. I, I did. Uh... Man, look at that. That is amazing. It? Now, where was that hotel at? It was down on Summer Avenue next to the Palomino Hotel was next to it. Wow. Yep. Oh, we took a picture shot. You got it? You got it. Incredible. We just need to shoot that. Yeah, that thing goes, it spells it out. And then, you know, Graceland knows that we have this, so they're, they're interested to probably rent it for a couple times. Mm -hmm. to, to use it for. Um, Man, this is a, a large room, and of course you've got it rounded out for your green screen and all that at the bottom. Right, and this is the, the, the only sound stage in Memphis, and the, the walls were filled with sand to oh. help the sound yeah. and, and the cinder block walls, and that's the biggest green screen in town, 32 feet across by 16 tall. Incredible. Uh, I think if I remember right, it's sitting up there. So friends, I know you want to see, so let's go see. There it is, friends. Hungerford. It is for sale. It has a pattern on it. It's kind of a, I thought it was material, but it's woven. It's like wicker. These stadium seats that are up here, yeah. where are they from? That's the same place, right? Same place. Yeah. So he believes that these chairs, friends, were from the Memphian Theater. Incredible. So this is real movie stuff, friends. They got the bags to weigh down the lights. Look at how heavy duty those lights are. That's the real thing. It's funny, all this movie equipment is so heavy duty and... Yeah, well, it's the, 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 the world, the way movies are kind of been drastically changing. But you would sell that Louisiana Hayride backdrop? Yeah, I'd probably sell it if the price were right. Justin Timberlake was in here doing a, a GQ. Uh, really? When? GQ uh, a couple years ago. And so he did a GQ shoot in here? Yes, uh -huh. and he, he wanted to buy the sign. The RCA Victor? RCA because that's who he signed with. 
but uh, he didn't want to pay what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to get for that? I had asked 3000 Yeah, well, that, I would think it would be well worth that. Yeah. Vegas. So uh, this sign right here is for sale as well. Oh, yeah. What would you take for that sign? 20000 20000 Yeah. And that would be Orlando or Vegas, most likely. They would take that to, uh, they, they have the, um, the sign museum, what's that called, the uh, Neon Museum well, they do in Vegas. Right and what would you take for the Louisiana Hayride? I don't know, I'd have to think about that. That's it. negotiable? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the Silver Horseshoe Motel, is, it lights up on both sides. It's so that's, that's double sign then, that's it right. looks like that on both sides. That's an incredible sign, it's beautiful. Facility here is for sale. Oh, really? Yeah, and someone, were, you know, we're looking for a production studio, this place would be perfect for them. And it's in a good place, it's right off of Elvis Presley Boulevard. Yeah, well, I didn't realize how close to Graceland you are. 55 and 40, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, the crossroads. And I would probably let a lot of the, the decoration and stuff stay with it. The equipment so, and everything. The equipment, yeah. Got some big old light boxes up there. Yeah, that's, that holds 6,000 watts. So, uh, so if anybody's looking for a, a, a studio that's already loaded with lights and, and then has a, a hell of a history and a lot of memories, this place is it, because it is for sale. And uh, we'd love to find somebody that would keep up the tradition of using it as a motion picture soundstage and a, and a production facility. Amazing. So you carried on the tradition of your dad. Yeah. He was in the industry? Well, he was in still photography he was in, only. Okay, so, but you moved it over to still photography and then to motion picture no, photography. No, he had it still photography, and I, and I stepped in after college and was a still photographer for three wow. years and came up with the idea to get into the motion picture industry. And, and what happened was is that people would say, well, what have you done? And I'd say, well, we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, we ended up going over to Mountain View, Arkansas, and shot, borrowed a camera, borrowed, got some film together, outdated and all that, shot over in, Arkans in, in Mountain View, and ended up putting together a 60-second a commercial for Arkansas Tourism. And we entered it in the Chicago Film Festival. It won fourth place, wow. and we had our ticket. And then you can refer to that. Yeah. This is what I've done. Show somebody what we've done. We actually won an award for it, too. Amazing. Yeah. So, so you do incredible work. We try and to. you like to do positive work. Oh, yeah. That's important, yeah. and I like that. Sure, yeah. You, you, want, you want somebody to remember what they see in a, in, in a, in a positive way. And, and I believe that you've got to deliver somebody the wow factor. And if, you, if you've got a little wow going on, then you're going to remember it. You push that button. Amen. I like that. So friends, he tightened up and got in the, music, in the motion picture industry. And there you go. He's created some incredible stuff. And we learned some incredible stuff here. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> that's, oh, that's, that's where the... That Silver Horseshoe Motel was out on Summer Avenue. Wow. So are these buildings gone now? Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's a, a, like a, a hardware store. So there it is right there. That is incredible. That's an awesome sign. And you could, I'm glad you got that and it didn't go in the trash somewhere. <laughs> Man. I'll be glad when I sell it. Yeah. <laughs> and look at Elvis at 70. Yeah, about that. <laughs> that is funny. Love this uh, uh, lighting system. This is old school, but it still works. Well, Channel 5 was going to throw it away. Really? Yeah, and so I, and it, only two dimmer banks work, but I, I didn't need any fancy dimmer stuff in here. And so we've We've got 32 circuits on the ceiling that are, that are geared for the... And it's just 208 volt, it's, it's single phase, it's not, not That's right. three phase. That's Interesting. Right. Yeah. As big as it is, I would have thought it had been three phase, and, no, no, but no, all no, of your no. lighting is just 20, 208, which is here, industrial. 2208. Yeah, there you go. Kliegel Brothers. Yeah. That's an incredible piece right there. Yeah, it is. This was the first Holiday Inn. The very first? The very first Holiday Inn. Now where was that at? It was at? out on Summer Avenue. And, um, it yeah. has the look of the Lorraine. Yeah. The Lorraine has yeah. that very similar. Kimmons Wilson, who started it all, of course. And this was being shot for uh, an advertising agency in Chicago. But they offered my dad 250 shares of stock. 
<laughs> instead of getting paid. Instead and he of, said no. He couldn't do it. <laughs> he needed to get paid, but man, you know what that would have been. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. I wouldn't be standing here right yeah. now. <laughs> You hear all those stories about stuff like that. It's in, incredible. Yeah. Well, it does happen. It does. It really does. And it still does. This is your dad. Yeah, there he is. And then the autograph. Did you see that other picture? And then the autograph is in here. Yeah. So was this on the day that this was shot, you think? You know, I'm not Possible? Sure. I don't know. It wouldn't have been because no, he would have, he it would, have, he'd had to develop it. Had to been processed, yeah. Right. But that's a true to life Elvis autograph right there, friends, in front of the photographs his dad took. Yeah, they, I love the title they put on this, The Lost Photo Session of 1956. <laughs> and that's really what it is. It's, it's, very few people know that it happened. Mm -hmm. And this was the year that incredible things happened to him. He went from mediocrity mm -hmm. to huge fame in a very short period of time and went from relatively poor to very rich. Yes. All in one year. Colonel Parker took care of that. He sure did. <laughs> he sure did. He made sure. <laughs> Man, thank you so much for sharing. Sure. This is this is incredible. So friends, this kitty cat's name is Stax. He lives in here. He actually just said Stax. Enjoy the rest of your day. Yes, sir. You too. Thank you. If you're down in Memphis during, uh, during the barbecue festival, you get me up you got the river. Stop by and get some barbecue. Yeah. You gonna be, so it's down on the river where it happens yeah. at? In Memphis, there may be 250 teams on the river. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Incredible. Sounds good, man. Thank you so much. Delicious. So, friends, Graceland is right over, right down there, and this is API, and this is the only sound stage. Uh, for making movies in Memphis. And so this nice gentleman told us that story. Fantastic. I was hoping to see if they had some quality furniture pieces left over here at Hungerford, but this is all I found. The irony of this being out here in front of this is pretty crazy. Frisco plant. So friends, we're at Chargine Road and Frisco Avenue. And what I want to show you today is 2400 Frisco. Hungerford Furniture, the story that we're telling you that we've been talking about. This is the Hungerford Furniture plant right here. Memphis, Tennessee, 2400 Frisco. This is where that furniture was built at, and you can see it's a huge plant. It was all the way down there. I'm gonna drive down to the other end and see if there's anything down there. And here's some good quality furniture right here. You can buy those at Walmart. A little table with three legs. And we got a little ant situation here too. And maybe some uncles, but mostly ants. So if this campaign had gone through, and of course he actually did technically endorse it, this is the only time Elvis ever endorsed a product other than his own product. So now you have another piece of the Elvis puzzle and Bill Carrier's dad tightened up and took these pictures back in 1956 in December. Thanks so much for watching. <music>